Um, Steve. Yeah. Steve, we're live. Yeah. Live? Steve, we're live. Why are you oh. looking in a tree? It's kind of cool. I just saw a woodpecker go into a hole, into a nest, and then one flew out. Kind of neat. But, but we're live. We are live. It was your job to set this one up, right? Because it's kind of deja vu -y. I am having total deja vu because we're in the same place we were Monday, which was my job but, to set up that day. No, no, no. Your job's today. No, I, I set up Monday. Today, Wednesday was your day to set it up. Are, should we call somebody on a radio? Yes. You don't have your radio. Great. Great. Hey, got a quick question for you. Okay. What's black and white and red all over? Dude, I've heard that joke a million times. It's <laughs> like the best dad joke ever. It's a newspaper. What? Sunburnt zebra. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look at this! Everybody say hi to that? Keeper Kelly. Oh my gosh. We're say letting, hi to Keeper Kelly, everybody. Letting her get the, the zebra settled. That, that's Keeper Kelly, if you guys got confused. <laughs> <laughs> Keeper Kelly, not in, the glory, not in the beautiful stripes today. Yeah. Wow, Kelly, thank you so much for bringing these guys to us. My pleasure. So, digital guests, what kind of animal, where are we? What habitat are we in? Zebras, a beautiful animal. Horse-like. Are they related to horses? Uh, they are. They are kind of like cousins. They're actually okay. the same scientific genus nice. as horses. These guys are labeled as the horse of the African plains. Oh, the horse of the African mm -hmm. plains, of course. Now, I did something, Kelly. I did a little bit of research, and I discovered that their stripes are unique. They're like individuals' fingerprints. Yes, that so is can correct. You, can you use that to tell these guys apart? Um, a little bit. I kind of use a variety of different features oh, of them. Oh, you do? Yeah, so we're going to go from right to left. The far right is our lady, Zaire. Hi, Zaire. She came from Miami Zoo a few years ago. Oh, so neat. Zaire, to me, is kind of like, has a cute little stocky draft horse face <laughs> that a zebra might would represent. Okay. Um, and then she's also got a little shorter tail. She does have a little shorter tail. She does. And then Miracle is me. <laughs> Miracle's in the center. <laughs> Hey, and miracle. she's got the longest tail and the longest mane. She's also the darkest of the three. Oh, she is. She is. You can see that when you look, when you say it. Absolutely. And you look at it, you can see that she's definitely the darker of the three. Yep. Darkest of the three. Yep. Zaire, though, on the right side does have darker feet. So that's kind of one thing to oh, keep Oh, she an almost has different, different stockings on. Yep. And she has a little bit of a brown tint to her. She does. Is she's that, got a little bit of brown tint. That's okay. I want to make sure she was dirty or something she's like that. She's a little actually. dirty, and she's also still got a lot more of her winter coat than Miracle oh, does. Oh, okay. Yep. And that's then, interesting. I wouldn't have thought about that for a winter coat for a zebra. Yeah, yeah. They actually do. It's actually pretty cute. Uh, during the <laughs> wintertime, they get pretty fuzzy. A little just fuzzy? Like a normal horse. It's like they're not, blurry when you're looking at yeah, them. Yeah, they're a little blurry. They're not quite <laughs> as thick as like a domesticated horse would be, but they do get Get a little wow. bit of a winter coat. And then Zooberry is behind Miracle in the Zoo far left. Zooberry. <laughs> Z-U-B-E-R-I. Look at Wendy trying to get Zooberry on there. He's a cute boy. Zaire's not real sure what you're doing there, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to spook him, but it's... You're no, you did, you're doing... You're moving yep. so slow. It's awesome. You're, you're moving just fine. And so Zooberry, between the three, he is our male. He's castrated, though. Okay. And, and um, so he's a little bit browner than the rest of them when they're all clean. He's still the brownest <laughs> of the group. Uh, he's okay. also kind of got the most well-rounded end. And then nice. he also is just spunky, as spunky can be. So he's, he's so. spunky and has a well-rounded end. He does. Wendy, like us. I know. I was going to say, I I've, I've actually <laughs> think I've heard those descriptors. <laughs> spunky. Before, <yes. laughs> you do, have, but you don't wear the bright, well, but Zubray doesn't have the black stockings. like. Correct, yeah. He's a little bit more like Miracle's feet in that aspect. And Zubray did come from us from Kansas City Zoo. Oh, Miracle, cool. Miracle, however, was privately owned before she actually got here. So she oh. actually lived with animals like donkeys. So she is a lot more like a horse or a pet oh, really? than the other two. And so with Miracle, I can do a lot of training with her. No she kidding. is super intelligent and loves the attention. Really? Absolutely loves the attention. And then Zaire and Zooberry, since they were born in zoos, they actually maintain more of the natural wild behaviors that most wild zebras do have. That is so cool. Do you think Miracle, maybe not straight away, but do you think Miracle will work with you today? She may. We'll okay. see what's uh, more exciting to her, the, the Timothy Hay or what I've got in my bucket. Nope, so. that's fair. That's cool. So pretty. Yeah. 
We've and already done a little bit of training this morning. We did some scale training. Oh, cool. To practice all three of them stepping up on a scale to get weighed. So, so you're trying to get them weighed. Yep, yep. We've oh, had so successful neat. weights so far this year, every month. Really? Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yep, that's you. a big deal. Yep. Hey, digital guests, where are you guys from? We don't ask that question all the time, but kind of need to get a little check-in with you guys today. Where are you guys from today? Um, just so you know, we are about $60, $50 from $3,500 through Zoo Adventures alone. That is so exciting. That's incredible. So if you guys can can find it within to hit that donation button, get us up around that $3,500 mark. Again, it's totally random. That's a number I'm just following. I just follow the big zeros. It's easier for me that way. That would be fantastic. Have a lot of people from North Carolina so far. Cool. Virginia Beach. Oh, uh, how's Vibe? That's awesome. Walnut Cove. I wonder if our UK friends are watching. We've had Diane, people from yeah, UK watching. Jane every once in a while watches. A lot of our North Carolina friends. Got some California friends. I mean, it's ten o'clock in North. It's ten o'clock in North Carolina right now. Ten o seven. We people from North Carolina. We have people from the Great Britain and people from California watching. Sometimes yep. that is so cool. A lot of people overseas, which has been wonderful. That's been neat. So thank you guys so much for telling us where you're from. Zebra. And they, you said they are related. Now, a little smaller than a horse. They are. They, um, they're also the smallest subspecies of the zebra group Oh, in wait, general. okay. So there's different types of zebra? Yes, um, there are different types. These oh, guys fun. are the Grant's zebras, also commonly known as the plain zebras. The Grant's or yep. the plains zebra. And they stand gotcha. at about like four and a half feet tall at the shoulder. Okay. Some of the other ones can get up to like five, five feet. Yeah. Really? Some of the other species, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Yep. That's big. I didn't realize I got that big. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They can get pretty tall. Well, while we're letting these guys kind of settle in, let's talk about zebras a little bit. I, their eyes are on the side. Are they a prey item? They are. They are a prey species. Really? Yes. So, guys, look at their eyes. They're on the side of the head. We haven't dove into that very often. I'm just looking. Wendy, zoom in on those. Look at the, I'm sorry. I don't mean to tell you what to do, but can you zoom in on the head? I already did. Did you? Look at the striping, too. That is so pretty. But look at the position of the eyes. What's the benefit of having eyes on the side of your head instead of in front? You and I have eyes in front. Lions have their eyes in front. I would probably trip a whole lot less if I had eyes on the side. You may. You may. I don't know if that would help me much in that aspect. Yeah, I'm pretty klutzy. <laughs> so eyes on the side of the head? Rabbits had them? You can see all around you without having to turn your head. You have excellent peripheral vision. You can actually see a little bit behind you. Rick Disher said peripheral vision. Ten points, Rick. You can count on Rick. Great job. Thank you. So, yeah, having that peripheral vision, an extended peripheral vision, you and I, it's really just shoulder to shoulder, isn't it? But these guys can see a little bit further behind them, even though they can run really fast. 40 miles an hour, Kelly? That is, that that is correct. They can, and they can actually miles run an hour. in our habitat. Our habitat's large enough that they can run around. It is a big space. Mm -hmm. We'll show that to everybody in a second. Wendy, you got a question? Uh, no, Rebecca just made a really good observation. Oh, she cool. said, so they can actually see while they're eating. Yes. Oh, wonderful observation, Rebecca. Yes. So when their head is down like that, that's a great observation, actually. Head is down like that, they can kind of still see, and you can see them now. You know they're looking. Now, Wendy and I, they're not familiar with Wendy and I, with Wendy and me. They know Kelly, of course. But look how calm they are. Still doing really well. Now, I want to, I'm, I'm kind of looking. Zaire's been by herself this whole time. Yes. Yeah, so since Zaire's the newest of the group, typically oh. you're going to see Zuberry and Miracle hang out together just because okay. they have a little bit of a stronger bond. Okay. I was just kind of as an aside. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. How come they're not all yeah. cool? So eyes on the side and those amazing ears. And those ears can flip all the way around too, as you can kind of see. Yes. They're, they're cueing in and all sorts of sounds, both forward yep. and backwards. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I want to do something with you, with our digital guests real quick about those yeah. ears. With those ears, now they're up here, right? But I'm going to put them around. If you put them like us, you expand those cups. Because all this is, it's just a cup. This is just a cup. It's catching noise. It's catching vibrations that come in. 
So when you cup your ears, you're catching more of those vibrations. You're catching more sound. And if you're a zebra and you can move these ears all around, I can find those sounds. And you can do the same thing. If, you're, if you do this, you can catch sounds coming from the front. But if you do this, now you can catch sounds coming from behind you and in front of you. And if you just do this, all the sounds in the front kind of go away and you can really hear what's going on behind you. So having those ears that swivel, huge advantage if you're a zebra. Thank you, Wendy. I think that's such a neat thing. I love having that kind of thing that helps them survive like that. And you wouldn't even think about it. Absolutely. But having those ears that swivel and rotate like that. Wendy? Random question and uh, an eight-year-old would like to know okay. where the zebras go sleep at night. That is an excellent question. So for our zebras, they pretty much have free choice in the evening. Once the zoo closes, we do give them access to the habitat as well as their barn. Oh, so wow. it's completely up to them as to where they hang out during the night. Most of the time, they're going to stay outside for most of the day. Mm -hmm. um, if they do choose to, they do have a barn, and in the wintertime, it's heated. Oh, usually, wonderful. if it gets super cold, we will straw it down, so they've got a really super nice, comfy bed during the winter. And we gotcha. have seen them lay down and sleep in there, and we have seen them lay down out here as well. Oh, cool. That's so neat. So hopefully, they did that ear activity at home. Yes. And they can, they can see what it felt like and sounds like yep to hear like a zebra or like a prey item a bunny most prey yeah, yeah have deer. those real swivelly real mobile ears so what are their primary senses kelly what do you think they kind of is it the ears i would say definitely ears yeah are very 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 important and then the next thing i say would also of course be the eyesight as yeah, well yeah those sense. are those are your two primary key indicators for detecting prey yep so you can hear things moving in the grass, you know, at longer distances as well sure. as see that motion, which is very, very important. Great point. So social structure wise, we've had, we've been so lucky to talk to so many keepers. You Absolutely. guys have been amazing with us. So what, what's kind of their social dynamic in, you know, in their wild spaces? What, how would you see zebras grouped together? Typically um, in the wild, you would actually see extremely large groups of zebras up to like the hundreds. However, wow. within those groups, you'll actually really see just small family circles. So oh, you'll really? typically see one stallion, a few mares, and then their offspring. And then they just kind of rotate around. Okay. But typically they'll kind of stay in these really big large groups to kind of help one defend from predators. Oh, sure. So it's a great way to kind of have that big old single mentality. Yep. However, if there is a predator that approaches, the stallion will actually typically stay behind, so he protects the rest of the group. Oh, really? Yeah. No kidding. So the so oh. the ma so the male the male will be in the rear. The male zebra stays in yep. the rear for protection. I, I didn't know that. Yep. That's cool. I didn't know that. However, with these guys, although Zuberry is our castrated male, honestly, personality wise, I think I would have to give it to Miracle as being the queen bee. in the middle. <laughs> yep. Yep. She's she's the the prima donna. That's awesome. That's so much fun. So if, if a predator's coming at the group, the male stays behind, but how, like, what, what, what other defenses do they have? So, like, they, they will stay in the rear of the pack as they're running. He won't, like, stay in one individual spot. But when they all move, he will be the last or the one in the rear just to kind of protect the group. Mm -hmm. But if they ever do come in contact with predators, of course, their main defense mechanism is going to be kicking as well as because they run so well and run so yeah. fast. They're really adapted to run at long distances as well. So although they can run oh, up to 40 okay. miles an hour, they can keep that pace for an extended amount of time. So they can time. outrun a lot of predators they can over out, time. Yep, over time, which is a great way. So kicking, biting isn't really a big thing for predators. That's mainly for communication between one another's zebras. Oh, really? Because yes. I guess the males will fight? Yes. Because you said they kind of live in oh, those... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll fight for, you know, different partners and territories. Territories oh, cool. for male zebras are actually really large. It's one of the largest for herbivores. Yeah. And so it's really kind of cool. They'll defend their territories by um, their feces and their urine. To okay. Kind of detect like, hey, this is my place. So yep, often we'll actually see space. zooberries feces placed along the edge of the habitat. So it lets us know that really? this is his space. He does that. He does. Yeah. When it, with, a, with a habitat as large as this, and if I'm not mistaken, this is like 11 acres? This seven? one's only about three. This one's yep. three. So the other one is 11. So, but able to run this entire length, and he's like able you. to kind of set his own perimeter up. Absolutely. That is so neat. 
You got a comment, Wendy? Uh, well, we had a question. Someone, one of our digital guests mentioned that, well, we talked about that the, the stripes were a lot like fingerprints. Yep. And they're very individualistic, but what else do they do for the zebra? <laughs> you have just opened the proverbial can of worms, guys. Um, there's a lot of theories as to why they're striped. Kelly, you want to lead us off? Absolutely. We'll kind of keep going with the individual thing. It's also a great way that the babies, the foals, will identify the moms is oh, through really? their stripe pattern. So the babies will actually memorize the stripe pattern no so kidding. they know which one is their mom. That's crazy. And then going beyond that of yep. identification, um, like I said earlier, in the large groups when they're together, it's hard for a predator to determine where one zebra ends and another <laughs> zebra begins. If you need to see them lined up like that, I bet Abs you could see it really quick. And that especially way. in yes. motion, in fast motion. Yeah. It's blurry. It's, it's like just a, a big blur. Blurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot. Yep. And then another one that to me is one of my favorite things that I like talking about is yep. actually their stripes are one of the best fly repellents out oh. there. Oh. It's, a, it's a fly repellent. It is too. a fly repellent. They actually did that? a study based on different patterns of species and whatnot, and yeah. they found out that the stripes, the flies have a lot harder time determining what surface and what space between the black and the white. Oh, because they, they couldn't oh, really oh, land yeah. on them, could yeah. they? They're not sure what to land on. So a solid outline might be better for a, for a, for a fly. Right. They just, boom, right yep. there, it's like a rock or poop or whatever it is yep. they're landing on. Does the, the black around their eye help like like with cheetahs and with sunlight and glare? Because I've noticed with these guys I thought maybe they'd have they have black like cheetahs do or like cat like predator cats sometimes have the black around yeah. their eye. Yeah. You or like football absorbing. players will yeah, yeah. put the the black under their eyes for kind the, of reducing that glare. The that's glare. a great question. I've I never bet you're right. I've never heard that but that's because all three of them sense. have black yeah. under their eye. Yep. Well something else I've heard with the stripes is it actually helps with thermoregulation, helps with temperature yes. regulation as well. Absolutely. And there's a couple different reasons for that. One, it's not a solid color. So the white and the black kind of help them kind of either stay cool or stay warm, depending on the situation. The other thing that they've, that they've looked at, the scientists have looked at, is where the black and the white touch. And you guys see that? Where the black and the white touch. There's actually little tiny eddies of air. There's little tiny swirls of air that keep the animals a little cooler. A little bit of a wind there. How crazy is that? And they think that also might be helping, as well as the, the white is cooling and that black is a little bit more warming. So they're helping with temperature regulation with those stripes as well. Amazing animals, just so cool. And so many really unique adaptations, especially in the striped world. Kelly, you've moved a little closer. Are you going to see if Miracle will work with you? Yeah, I'm going to attempt to see if she might be a little bit interested in what I've got. So okay. I'm moving closer to her so she doesn't feel as uncomfortable to approach you guys since y'all are still new. Yep. So Kelly's a little further away now, guys. So we're trying to kind of honor the distance for the zebra. They have a flight or fight distance. And, of course, we don't want to get into that either one of those distances. So we're going to stay where we are. Kelly, as you just heard, is going to help. She's going to try to get her voice up there so she can kind of see what's going on. I'll also narrate a little bit about what we see. You just saw right there, Kelly threw a little piece of carrot. Uh, sweet potato. Sweet potato. But threw I a little piece of carrot in here as well. <laughs> threw a little piece of sweet potato to see if Miracle will, will work with her. And while, while Kelly's doing that, I'll do a little bit more on the zebras. Their feet are amazing. And we'll share this with you in a sec, too. I think we have time. Look at their foot. Wendy, can you show their foot? It's awesome having Wendy as, my, as on the team, guys. She listens, she hears, she focuses right on it. She can do exactly what you're asking. So thank you, Wendy. That foot is a single toe. Remember Monday? We talked about the ostrich. How many toes did the ostrich have? Do you remember? Those of you that were here last week, last on last week, on Monday. Feels like a week. It's been a long Feels week. A long week. <laughs> How many toes did the ostrich have? Does somebody remember? One, two, or three? The ostrich has two toes. The zebra has one. And that's what they're running on. They're reaching those speeds of 40 miles an hour on a single on a toe. toe. On a toe. On a toe. Now, there's four total toes. Yeah. <laughs> But they're running that fast on a single toe on each foot. Remember how we talked about when you and I run, guys, we don't run flat-footed. 
we run on our toes. This is Target. Oh, you heard that before. <laughs> so Target, so Kelly asked uh, Miracle, that's Miracle the Zebra, Miracle to Target, and Miracle did. She came up and near Miracle put her nose on Kelly's fist. That's Kelly's Target in the moment. And you heard that click and you saw her kind of startle and you heard, I don't know if you heard Kelly or not. Even though Miracle startled a little bit, Kelly's oh, like, you've heard me. that before. Hi everybody. <laughs> Target, good. I'm that was awesome. Because that's something she's going to be more comfortable with with people around. Awesome. So she said she's going to switch to a verbal good as opposed to the clicker, even though she is familiar with the clicker. Watch her move. She moved her feet, moved her head to get to that target. How cool is that? Are you using the Tupperware now because of COVID? Um, no, it's just a safety precaution. Oh, okay. Um, although that they, you know, they eat just like horses and they use their lips. It's just a precautionary measure, so we just don't get fingers in the mouth. <laughs> they do have a unique skull structure, and I'll share that. Look at that. She knew where to go, and she's able to touch. So that was a nice touch there. So move the head to one side and touch the other side of the neck. Their skulls are unique, and the tooth, the teeth structure, the tooth structure on these guys is really cool. Look at that. So Miracle is comfortable letting her touch, like her look at her hoof. Hoof care is very important in this absolutely. species, like a horse. Just or like a horse. Even in the giraffe, the rhinos, the elephants, mm -hmm. hoof care, uh, feet care is very important. Yep. And to build that bond, to create that relationship is really important. That's a, there's so much trust. And that's that out here that. in a big open space with two strangers pointing things at them, talking about them. And talking a lot and not being <laughs> real quiet. You know, we're trying to be a little sensitive. No one would ever accuse us of being quiet, Steve. <laughs> That's a good point. So what was that one, Kelly? So this is actually a behavior that one of our interns started. Um, we're working on trying to see if we can get her to open her mouth. So right now it's just getting those lips open. Okay. If you guys didn't hear that, she's working on an open mouth uh, training aspect. So, that, so, so it's beginning that. So now, it maybe not the whole mouth opening, but the lips opening or targeting to that one location and giving the reward. Good job, you did a great job, Miracle. Thank you, here's that reward. It'll be a, a step. So right well now said. it's the lips, then the lips farther open, then holding them open, yep. then maybe the, you know, showing the teeth, being able to touch the teeth maybe, and then even opening the whole mouth and teeth. Yep. So it's step by step by step. So those of you that are into this, into the training side of things, and kind of like the sciency part of it, those are called successive approximations. approximations. Successive approximations, step by step, just like Wendy said, step by step, small thing versus small thing to small thing. So all that goes into training. It's it's no different than potty training your child, exactly. training your dog to sit. That yep. Sometimes you have to take small steps yep. for a big behavior. The closeness, right? Yeah. It's that you almost did it here. Good job. Yeah. You almost did it here. Good job. And making it all positive. And then working with the other zebra. I see that Kelly's throwing some treats yep. down there for the other zebra. Getting that encouragement. Getting that trust built up. Look, I'm not doing anything but just giving you some food right now. And maybe down the road... That guy will take in. Take now, it in. now she's targeting two Target at a time. Target on both of them. Talk about skill set, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of neat. I didn't realize that Kelly was working with the others. That's cool to see that different type well, of behavior. Well, especially training with a social group would be very difficult because they are social. They so. want to be together. So if one is getting treats, the other one's like, hey, I yep. want to get in on that action. <laughs> <laughs> so Miracle wants to come no matter. <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> That is so Which neat. tells me that the training is always positive with them because if they weren't enjoying it, it wasn't a positive time, they would yep. not be coming over to Kelly. Great point. If they didn't actually... They didn't trust. They didn't trust think her it was a and, good thing. and it was a good thing. Look at that. Good hands-on, good touch, good feel. Everything feels good in there. That is Kelly, that's amazing. She's our good girl. Remember, that's a, that is a prey item. <laughs> That's an animal that does get hunted by other animals in the wild. And to allow that kind of tactile sensation, to allow the animal, to allow another animal, Kelly in this case, to walk down her side and not, not flee, that's pretty cool. It's a lot of trust. Yeah, it is. Especially because behind us, it sounds like they're doing some tree trimming or construction. And so both of them did it again. Noises, there's us. How cool is that? 
Can you do a quick paint on the habitat, Wendy? I know that that's kind of neat to see. I just want people to see how big, how expansive this space is. Pushing three acres. Look how pretty, too. I mean, kind of the previous side of it. Who likes the habitat, huh? And there's the... Can you, there you go. I don't know if I'm, I'm not a very good pointer. That's the giraffe deck. There he is. I'm not a very good pointer. There it is. It looks very <laughs> small from this angle. We're at we're, one of our overlooks, so guests that are here, we are open, can come watch what we're doing right now. Nobody there right now. I'm waving to nobody, but that's okay. The zoo is open, as we've said before. Timed tickets, limited entries per half hour and for total. Get your reservations online. If you have a really difficult time doing it online, you can call the zoo. The easiest thing to do is check the zoo's website, nczoo.org, to find out that information. I hope somebody's been able to hit that donation donation button. We're do so we wanna, close to 3,500. Uh, go get the picture of that skull together since we'll, we'll move slowly yeah. together. Yep. We're going to move to the stump. Absolutely. That was awesome. Oh, look at this miracle. She's not done. <laughs> this is... Again, we've told you guys before that um, I don't get to do things like this all the time. I have, I was a keeper for a little bit a long time ago, so I have done some things. I've never been this close to a zebra. Okay. I've never been this close to a zebra. She's giving them the all done signal, yeah. but they're just checking. I, I have to show her sometimes the bucket so she sees that, oh, okay, it's empty. That's it. That was so cool. Wendy's like, Steve, here, we're, we came over here for a reason. We are educating stuff here. <laughs> I'm close to a zebra, Wendy. Here's the picture I was going to tell you about. Wendy's going to take the microphone again. So this is a skull. They are herbivores. They're plant eaters. You can see those grinding teeth here. Those are the grinding teeth, of course, because they are herbivores. But this is so unique. They have cutting teeth, cutting incisors on the top and the bottom making them very unique in many ways a lot of times herbivores only have teeth on the bottom cutting teeth on the bottom incisors on the bottom they don't have those cutting teeth on top zebras are kind of what's the word i want to say they're they're a beneficial grazer they're an animal that eats any grasses they don't really care what kind of grasses they're eating they'll eat the dried grasses the, the stemmy grasses they don't have to have the really good fresh grass. So as they're eating all those other grasses, they are, whoop, we, have, we, have, we might have a really cool behavior. So while, they're, while you're tuning in on the zebra, I'll continue that little bit about their, what they're doing. They're cutting off, they're literally like scissors. Are you kidding me? So Cut what's it. going on here, Kelly? Why is that zebra laying down on the ground? <laughs> He is doing a dust bath, so this is a great way for them to keep clean. And that's one of his favorite spots right now. That's why really? like, I was selling him approach. I was no, like, yeah, he yeah. might be doing a dust bath. So it's a great way for them to also help keep the flies off of their body as okay. well. It's a good sunscreen, protectant, all sorts of goodies. So we've seen that in a few other animals too. We've seen, yeah. it, we've seen it kind of in the rhinos, kind of in the, in the elephants. The bison. We saw it in the bison. That's true. Sorry, I'm bouncing yep. all over here. Pay attention, Wendy. <laughs> So he's going to do a little dust bath himself. He had a nice meal. Take a bath. <laughs> All is well. Like All is good. I'm done. So yeah, so the diet, real quick, just wrap that up. They are those beneficial grazers. A lot of other animals only want the really fresh, really new grasses. So they'll follow with, he's laying back down. They'll follow with the zebra herds. The zebra herd kind of clears out the, the, the tough grass and then the other animals, maybe like a Thompson's gazelle or a wildebeest, can then go down and get the, get the greener grasses for them. That is so neat. Zebra, who knew all this cool stuff? And the training is amazing. Thank you. That is really cool, Kelly, to see those kind of neat, neat behaviors. And you wouldn't think something, I mean, target, and, and like you with all the tactile, with all the touching and things like that. Now we've heard, I don't know how far along you are, and maybe it doesn't, maybe, maybe it's not something you're, maybe not want a goal of yours. We've heard some of the other people are doing like voluntary blood draws and hoof work and yes. footwork and things like that. Where do, do you see any goals like that for the zebras? Absolutely. You do? Yes. Oh, fun. Um, so actually this year was the 
I want to say second year or maybe third. I think it's the second year in a row that Miracle has voluntarily allowed us to do her vaccinations. Really? So that includes West Nile, Triple E, as well as Rabies. Thumbs up for Kelly. Yes. Thumbs up for Kelly. Thumbs up for Miracle. Miracle and Miracle, did well, well said. Miracle yes. has to do the has to do yes. the job. That's Miracle true. Miracle did absolutely well. The other two, again, she was a privately owned, so she's a lot more docile than the yeah. other two. The other two are going to take a lot longer to build up that trust. Okay. And so, like, that's why I was reinforcing Zaire for being in close proximity. That was neat. Because we do want to build up that trust. Because sure. I think we can get all three zebras. It's just going to take a little bit more time. That's cool. Yeah. That's so neat. I'm coming over. We we always have shout outs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Then, yes. Well, first of all, your dad is watching. Awesome. Hey, oh, hi. I'm Mr. <laughs> Kelly Davis. Um, so do you have any <laughs> shout outs today that you want to say? Anybody? Absolutely. Um, I just kind of wanted to mainly highlight my nieces and nephew. Oh, fine. So, Ooh, hey to nephews. Kelsey, Anna, and then also to Sawyer and Addison. And of course, the rest of the family and friends. <laughs> So you guys should be giving Kelly a thumbs up right now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Done some amazing work out here. We have a cool craft. You want to share the craft with everybody? Oh, absolutely. Oh, this is so neat. Yeah, Nikki outdid herself again. She needs to stop that. I had to protect them. We put them in like a little boma or corral so they would stay protected. Look at you going with the boma corral word. How cool is this? It's amazing what you can do with toilet paper rolls, right? Yeah. So Look neat. how cute. These are adorable. And so which I'm, is which here? Who do you think this might be? Yeah, you can name them. Um, we're going to go with Miracle. Yeah, a little, we'll little more stand <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure our friends answering questions for you guys online right now will Put give you up. a link to our craft. But Nikki outdid herself some pipe cleaners, some toilet paper rolls, some glue. If you have some Google eyes or you can draw them on. A great tail too. It is so cute. And guys, remember, if you make these... Somebody, I, and I should have got the name, and I, I wish I would have, um, made one of the ostrich crafts the other day, that little kind of marionette puppet that was made. If you guys make them, share them with us. We'd love to see them. And you can hashtag us at NCZoo, or you can hashtag us at NCZooED. Yay. And we can uh, see your awesome skills. Should we show them the foot real quick? We told them sure. we, we had it. I don't want to extend, extend this because, but this is, and this is a real skeleton. What's the best way? You want to do that way? Yeah. You tell me what you need. There's that. Toe. And there's that single toe right here. There's the single toe. So remember, just kind of like in the ostrich, this is the foot. This is the, this is the, this is the toe and the foot. This is kind of the, the base of the foot with the knee up here. Or the ankle up here. Well, on these guys, it bends properly. Yeah, so not backwards seeing... like the ostrich. Right. Yep. Just wanted to show you that they do have that single toe in there. I think it's neat. And that's what, one of the reasons they can run so daggone fast is that they're on that single toe. Oh my gosh, Steve, we've had two people donate. We hit $70. <laughs> We beat our Monday goal, and we just beat our 3,500. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome, all of you out there. So many people, and those of you that have come back time after time, it's really cool to see. And like Wendy and I say all the time, it's kind of like we're getting to know you guys. You guys come back, hey, Zoo family, how you doing? Same thing to you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking this out. Any questions that we missed, Wendy, that you said you had? No, and come our, up? our friends that are answering questions behind the scenes for us today have been killing it. Who was it today? Beth and Kathy Nikki, I and saw, Nikki. and Bob. Oh, Bob came on too. Yeah, I saw Good. Bob too. You do. So thank you guys very, very much. It's always nice to see you. There's a few flies out here today. There's a few flies. I need to go roll in some dust. We need to give you stripes. <laughs> or stripes. That's, I like that. I would, I can, I would probably rock some stripes. Lunch and we'll fix you all right up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. You guys have a great day rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and your week. Wendy and I will be back with you on Monday. You better live. believe we'll be back on Monday. That was pretty good. I like that. We'll just leave it there. We will. Okay. You guys stay safe. Thank you for bringing us into your homes. We truly appreciate it. We're everywhere we are with you right now. We thank you so much for letting us come into your homes. Um, so Zoo Adventures, Mondays and Wednesdays, 10 o'clock. We'll be back again Monday. You guys have a great time. We'll see you later.